Amy here again. Welcome to Gift Baskets 2.0. If you watched our first gift basket class, then you should have all the basics down. In this class, we are gonna add just a few more tips and techniques to your gift basket making arsenal that you can use on future gift baskets. So let's get started. Okay, we are now going to build a welcome to your new home gift basket. And the first thing I want you to notice is how much tissue paper is in this laundry tub. Because remember, we want to set stuff on top of the gift basket, not down in the gift basket, so we create height. And plus, when we add these things, some of these things are a little bit heavy. This weight is going to push it down. But I want to show you what I did. I basically have this uh, packaging wrap that because this is heavier duty than tissue paper, this filling up the bottom and then putting regular tissue paper on top that's a little bit more decorative. Jeez. All right. And then we're going to start placing the items with the largest items in the back. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this facing me to begin with. And then I will turn it around so y'all can see. Now, if I was giving this as a gift, I would be tying this all down really well with uh, glue dots and packaging tape. Packaging tape for big, heavy things like this because glue dots are not gonna quite cut it. But I'm gonna have to take this apart again to give to a recipient in the gift basket class. So I'm just gonna sort of um, dry fit it for just uh, demonstration purposes. I do have a couple of things glued out it though to help me hold it in place. At least if nothing else to photograph it. Okay. Now we are going to put it in the wrap. And you can see I've already sort of bunched it up and set it down. I could have actually in this case put the uh, the laundry tub in first and then fit it in. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. If we're gonna try and center it. You see we've got these two corners of the bag. Okay, turn it around so you can see it now. Alright, so we've got this pretty well centered. And then because this pulls together, I purposely did it this way because I'm gonna use this as a sort of a stick to tie this all the shrink wrap to. Um, and then this gives it more height again and kind of uh, helps the structure as well. So let me get a little tie wrap here. These pipe cleaners work great for tying these up. These particularly are good though because sometimes you get them tied and you, you need to untie it again because you need to let some of the air out. So if you use um, thin wire, sometimes it's hard to get it untied again. All right, so now before we sleep wrap it, we're going to take these ends back so the shape looks a little more appropriate. I can already see I have too much air in it. But we're going to start shrink wrapping a little bit and then I'll let some of the air out. And then when you put this packaging tape on and you pull it towards the back, you really won't see it at all once you're all done. So, all right, let's start to shrink it. Again, I always start from the back because I don't want the items to pull forward. It'll have a weird leaning look if I do it that way. So I'm just focusing on the bottom area around the laundry tub, trying to get that smooth and trying to do this evenly again so it doesn't all sort of pull in one direction and make the gift basket look flopsided. Remember not to over um, crank because you can blast holes in it. So I'm gonna push this up here and lift some of that air out. And 
gonna neaten this up around the collar here a little bit. I might end up trimming some of that off with you when I'm all done. Okay, I think that looks pretty good though. Tie this up and turn it around back towards me so I can see for sure. Recentered that again. I kind of pulled this up to, to make it a little bit more taut. All right, and then we'll finish shrinking it. Again, starting towards the back because if, you, if it's going to pull in any direction, it, it better be more towards the back than towards the front because otherwise it'll just look like it's leaning forward. And just take your time and go slowly and again. If you didn't watch the first good facet class, you can do this with a hair dryer. I'm using a heat gun because I have a heat gun and this will be faster for the demonstration purposes. But you can use a hair dryer, it just takes longer. If you're going to be making a lot of good baskets for the holidays or just in the future in general, I recommend getting a heat gun. It can serve a lot of purposes in crafting. But especially for making a lot of good baskets, it's a worthwhile investment. Okay. And we're not going for perfectly smooth because make it too smooth too tight and you're probably going to melt a hole in it. So. everything in place too. So again, if I was really going to be giving this as a gift, I would probably use packaging tape to tie down the heavier items because they still could shift when you're transporting. So you see. Now if I need to, I think that actually the uh, first wrap around the collar adds a little dimension, so I'm not going to trim that. We're just going to put the bow on. try and just tie uh, things like this in a bow, not a knot, so that you can reuse them, why not recycle. I do so many gift baskets and stuff that people often take the stuff off the gift and then just turn around and hand it back to me because they know I will reuse it on another gift basket. So, all right, there you go. A new welcome to your home, a welcome to your new home gift basket. Okay, we are now going to build another snack gift basket with a twist on the other one we did in the first gift basket class. Uh, basically, it's the same gift basket container and we have snacks in it. I have changed the snacks around a little bit and sort of going with the fall, fall theme here. But the big difference is this, I wanted to show you. A trick about how to camouflage the gifts and incorporate them in part of the overall design. So maybe you had something really expensive that you wanted to sneak in there, you didn't want it to be immediately obvious. Um, you know, like maybe this is a, a container for a diamond bracelet or something and you wanted to sneak it in a relatively inexpensive looking snack gift basket. Or you just want to up the decor factor like I did in this case and just make it look, look more high end for just a basically an under $10 gift basket. So what I did here was I took this Lay's 
stacks container and which is like covered in blue and white writing which did not go with my theme and I covered it with um, scrapbook paper to color coordinate it and then I covered this up with this deco mesh that I just happened to have in my stash that was had all the fall colors I wanted to co co connect it to and then I just sort of pulled this up and, and tied it up and the advantage to this deco mesh is that it is really easy to make it look large and poofy, which is why people love it. So we are now going to just sneak that back in there. And the other thing I did that was just a little bit different is I, I put the uh, same um, uh, yellow shred in the bottom, but then I filled her in the rest of the dead space with various candies um, and the sort of Halloween theme here, or fall theme that we have going. So, all right, so we're pretty much got it all together. You saw how I did it in the other one, so I'm not gonna repeat that. But we're gonna finish this up and show you how I'm gonna use, tie this, this poof into the overall gift basket, so. All right, I already have this sort of shrunk down here, pushed down to make this easier. And again, we're just gonna try and center it. Picking it up is really the easiest thing to do, but center it and I can see it's not. Slide this over a little bit. Try again. Okay. Might have got a little bit too far the other way. Alright. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alright, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna tie it around our poop. Now this I probably will end up uh trimming some of this off and I'm done here but for now we're just going to leave it all of it together because it is kind of a lot plus we don't really want it to go over our poop so I'm kind of pulling it tight holding it with my fingers and thumb here and pulling it tight so it's cut this way in all the directions all right that also helps shift the diameter here a bit I'm trying to corral I was doing that, pulling it over. Okay, we gotta fix that. It's pulling so hard, I pulled this over. Good. This is a bit different because normally I would something like this would be centered, but I purposely made it off set to show you something a little bit different. We did a lot of things to be boring. If budget was no concern, I would have used all kinds of different items. But obviously, this is a library class, so we gotta we gotta be budget friendly. And a lot of people need to be budget friendly, so nothing wrong with that. We can still be uh, pretty creative within the under ten dollars budget. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we see we've got these wings again that we're going to take down before we start shrinking it. And then we'll start shrinking, and then I'll probably have to open up that collar again a little bit to let some of the air up. But we'll see how much air up that's still stuck in there. Oops, my finger. Okay. Oh, we're starting at the back. Right, and then try and go around it evenly so we have an even shrink. We're not pulling more than one side to the other than we wanted. I've also got chips in here which are going to squish pretty easily, so this might get less shrunk than other gift baskets, so I don't just squish them all to another end. Yeah, I'm gonna be somewhat quick though. Okay. Nope. My thing moved over. 
working. All right. It's actually pretty good, but I'm gonna slide this back over. And I really do like using pipe cleaners as opposed to wire because if you use wire and you're trying to tie it and retie it, sometimes it's hard to see the wire. Uh, put your fingers around it, see which way it's tied to untie it. So this makes it easier. Let's see what you do. Okay. Put that back up right again. And hopefully it'll kind of stay this way this time since I do have it mostly small. About 80% done there. Okay. And I think since I printing can pull it one direction or other, I think to, to help avoid it keep going that that way, I'm going to actually print it this way on purpose. Once I get the tape cleaner tight on here anyway. I really apologize for doing these demonstrations is I need to shrink wrap. It's so noisy. Not a necessarily pleasant sound, but what we have to work with. So all right, now let me turn this around towards me. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna purposely sort of pull it shrink it the way I want it to go, which is gonna be this way. on this corner because I do want it to stand up more towards me on this particular side. All right, now that I've got that done, I'm going to fix this. It's a little bit more lopsided than I wanted, but all right, it's okay. It'll still look good. And that's what you get remember. Don't worry about perfection, right? Okay, let me just do that. I'm going to put it a little bit there. Oops, and I did get a hole right there. So, again, no worries. I'm just going to take this really. Oh, no, it's good. Okay. I am going to trim some of this down. And it's just too much. We'll leave a little on there so it has some dimension. But we don't want it going over our poop. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Now this one, and this one, instead of adding a bow. I'm adding some uh, floral decor here. Again, I would normally put down much better, but I have to take this apart again. So I'm just gonna sort of loosely do this. It's under ten dollars, and minus the deco mesh, had this in my crafty stash. But anyway, I think a really beautiful gift that uh, anyone would be happy to have. On to the next. Okay, for these next two samples, I'm actually going to deconstruct them to hopefully give you some ideas and tips on what goes into actually planning to create 
a gift basket. Um, you see me build other ones, but by deconstructing it, you can sort of see uh, maybe the thought process I, I take in when I'm thinking about uh, the stuff I need to not only um, buy to give us the gift, but to create the structure for the gift basket. So in this case, you can see it's obviously a spa day gift basket. And working at the library, I started with this book, which gave me the idea that this would be a great book for a spa day. And especially being in the lavender, that's where my mind immediately went. So then I headed off to the Dollar Tree and I looked for things that would color coordinate. Then when I shopped around, I sort of had an idea of the size of the elements that I was gonna use. Then I looked for a container that would work. So you can see this all fits really nicely in here. Um, it's just right snug and everything is sticking out of it. And also I got this for height. This is something that you can pick up. Um, my company makes this particular one, but you can pick up similar things at um, like Michael's and um, Hobby Lobby and Joann's as floral picks that you can add into it to give it that height and give it sort of that high end look. Uh, even Dollar Tree has some some wood shapes that you can use that you can maybe add to a um, popsicle stick or something that you could uh, decorate and color coordinate with your gift basket to give it sort of a high end look to sort of add jewelry to your gift basket, okay? So let me take this apart now and show, show you a little bit of how I did this. I'll take this off first. These are stuck to the back of this with glue dots. This book is stuck to the front of this with glue dots. I'm gonna take that off. So I want to show you how I modified this as I started creating this. Okay, so I'm gonna take everything out here so I can show you the basic structure. And by the way, I, I'm not only looking for first color coordination, then theme coordination, right? But I'm looking for various sizes to add uh, dimension and height and you know to have a well-balanced design and things like this are perfect because this really is appropriate for spa day but it also adds another element of texture and then uh, this doesn't have to be a little bit more creative when you do men's gift baskets but floral is the easiest way to to add extra color and dimension okay so when I initially started this gift basket I just drafted it obviously when I was still at the store to have some idea if this gift basket would work but then when you actually go to put things together, you find you might need to make some, a few more modifications. So I'm gonna dump that shred out of there so you can see. So initially I put this, I knew this was gonna be where I was gonna probably start with height. And then put the book in front of it. And see the immediate problem with this is that this part of the label sticks up and that just does not look good. So I wanted to lift this up so that it would cover that up, okay? So this is where this comes in. I was gonna need to add some height anyway because if I just set these things in here, once again, they're just gonna be setting down in there. That's not very attractive, even if you add some shred. You, you can't really see them and it just, it, it looks more like a container, not like a gift basket. So what I did was use this uh, heavy packaging, okay? And I covered it with a piece of tissue paper. All right, and then this gives it a height structure that I need for the small elements as well as the book. Okay, so now that's covered up, right? And then I did put a glue dot on there just so it's not gonna slide around when I'm trying to shrink wrap it, okay? Um, and then, by the way, these glue dots are removable. That's one of the reasons I love them so much is because you can put it on and take it off However, if you leave something like this in the hot sun, if it gets to the melty stage, they will not be easy to come off. So keep, just keep that in mind when you're holding around, holding them around uh, any way to actually deliver a gift to somebody. All right, and now we have the height in that to lift these elements up out instead of setting down in, and then I just filled in with the shred, okay? All right, so that's that example. All right, and then in this last example, I want to show you again 
height is always the thing that I'm going for. There are um, flat gift box baskets that they make now that are in just flat square boxes. That's sort of a new thing um, that has become kind of trendy. And I think some of that has to do with shipping costs. It's just so much more expensive to ship a big basket like this. And if you put it in a flat square box, wooden box, um, it's just, it's cheaper for the companies to ship it. It does look cool, um, but it is uh, a simpler take on the traditional gift basket. Okay. All right, so anyway, I picked this out. I'm making a crafty gift basket. Again, we have the floral element to add some dimension. And by the way, if you're wondering about all these floral elements that I have used, I buy them in um, bunches. They usually have five or six uh, flowers to a bunch, depending on uh, the type of floral arrangement it is for a dollar. So let's say there's five on this one, this would be 20 cents, a pretty inexpensive uh, way to add a lot of flair to your gift basket, okay? And then obviously reusable too, so. And with this one, so I've got um, the paint colors that I have arranged in sort of a rainbow order, okay? And what I wanted to show you was how I did it. So, in order to have things not just be sliding around willy-nilly, I used these paper towel rolls and I just cut them down to size, <clears throat> make sure they're no higher in height than the actual box, right? And then where it was still wobbly, I worked in between with tissue paper. Uh, for this um, paintbrush set, I definitely had to put a lot of tissue paper in there. But you can see that this actually stands really well on, on its own. It would not be standing <laughs> on its own without that. So that just makes everything snug into place. And then also, this is actually the kind of container that they are using in um, sort of modern gift baskets. Or if you were to fill it up like that, you could do something like that. And then, you know, put a flower on the end. That is something that you can see if you look on Pinterest, you'll see a lot of ideas like that. Now, in this case, I just added one other element myself, which was it has these holes in here. And I didn't want to leave that hole open because uh, the shred would show or fall out and then the, or the tissue paper would show. So what I did was, I created a insert by measuring the inside dimensions and then adding appropriate sizes um, around the edges, basically creating uh, the bottom of a gift box, essentially, okay? I didn't even need glue for this because it just sets right down in there. And then that covers up that negative space and adds a little bit of color tricks. <laughs> 